Hey guys, and welcome to YA Bibliophile. I'm Heidi, and this week it's time for another Fangirl Friday. Now, I'm not in the typical spot where I do my Fangirl Fridays because um, there are windows behind that chair, and the lighting was really, really bad. So, um, yeah, so I kind of moved to another little spot. You can kind of see my book. I have my library back there, so close to where I do my in my mailboxes, but this is the couch. Um, this week, for my Fangirl Friday, I am talking about Robin McKinley. Um, this is the first Robin McKinley book I ever read. Um, you actually probably can't tell, but it's taped together because I read it so much and it was falling apart. And this is Beauty. Um, it's a retelling of Beauty and the Beast. And um, I, Beauty and the Beast was always one of my very favorite um, fairy tales. And when I was in college, I took a young adult literature course and we had to read from different genres and we could pick books within that genre from a list. And so I picked Beauty off the list simply because it was Beauty and the Beast. And I absolutely love this retelling. Um, so a 16 year old girl named Beauty and um, <clears throat> she's never really um, felt that she fit her name. She's always felt kind of awkward and um, again her dad comes across hard times and they have to move and he ends up at the castle with the beast and he has to bring his daughter back, that whole story. Um, and I just, I really loved the way that the story played out. I loved it so much that I own not one, not even two, but three copies of the book. <laughs> So, um, this one actually I think is my favorite, the, the hardcover. And then, um, the author of The Last Unicorn, which is one of my favorite movies, has a blurb on the back. And then, um, this one looks a, a little bit, yeah, this one looks a little bit younger. Um, but this one makes it look, because it's not, I mean, I certainly have it in my middle school library, it's certainly appropriate, but it's not just for middle grade. Um, so I read that, and then I went online and I looked up more about her and I found this book, which is Rose Daughter, which is another um, retelling of Beauty and the Beast. Um, and I was just amazed at how the same author could take the same story and tell it in two very different ways. Like, she keeps the elements, I mean, it's Beauty of the Beast, she keeps the elements the same. Um, but they're both just really, really good. This one um, um, is almost, she wrote, it says on the back, she wrote it about um, 20 years after she wrote Beauty. And um, yeah, it's really great. I loved it. And I, I think it's a little bit more mature, not like not like mature, like there's inappropriate content, but just uh, um, some of the nuances and things in the story I think older readers would get more than younger readers. Um, so after I read those, I also found out that she had written The Hero and the Crown and The Blue Sword. The Blue Sword was written first, it's a Newbery honor. The Hero and the Crown was written after, or published after anyway, and it's a Newbery winner. Um, but this one takes place before this one, okay? And these are just amazing um, fantasy girl power stories. Like, I would say high fantasy, like in, in a, you know, not in our world. Um, and obviously dragons in this one. And uh, I love them both. Um, so I totally have to fangirl about those because they are fabulous. She also, I forgot to mention, has written a, a number of other um, retellings of stories like um, Spindle's End is a retelling of Sleeping Beauty, Deerskin, which is the retelling of Deerskin, and um, The Outlaws of Sherwood, which is Robin Hood. She also has a short story, a few short story collections, one that are just hers, and then she's done a couple with her husband, Peter Dickinson. Um, I have Fire, I forgot to bring it over here, but Fire, and I believe the other one is Water. They're elemental um, stories. Um, so a number of other books as well. Chalice, um, which is about actually a beekeeper, which I thought was really neat. Sunshine is one of her, um, it's, a, it's a vampire story. Uh, it's probably the only Robin McKinley book you'll find in the horror section of your local library. It's a really, I think it's a really unique vampire story. It was really great. Dragon Haven, which is again, um, younger, not younger readers, but like my middle school, high school age readers, which is, I thought really interesting. It's kind of about a boy who grows up in like a haven for dragons. <laughs> like they kind of preserve them. Um, and then her newest book is called Pegasus. It's right here. Um, and when Pegasus came out, they did this really cool event, her publishers did, this really cool event where um, if you had what they called the Pegasus and Cake event, so where you had, you provided like some sort of snacks and you met with a group of people and talked about Pegasus and McKinley's other books, they would send you as the organizer a free hard copy of Pegasus plus a poster um, of the cover, which is such a gorgeous cover if you haven't seen it. Um, and then you could give those away at your event, like wrap them off or whatever. So I emailed because I'm a middle school librarian and asked, hey, can I do this in a school? Like, is that all right? Because I'd like to do one with my seventh graders and one with my eighth graders. Um, and they emailed me back and said, yeah, that would be great. And they sent me two hardcovers and two posters to give away to my students. 
um, and we had the event. It was fabulous. Um, I also sent out, I, I mentioned it on Twitter, I thought it was such a cool thing. And then I sent out an email. I'm on a couple listservs. One goes to um, everybody in the state of Wisconsin who wants to be on it. Um, and one is a nationwide um, listserv. So it, I emailed on both of those to tell people about it. And a couple, um, a number of other schools kind of joined in because they saw those. Um, so apparently Robin really appreciated that because the woman, Catherine, Kathy, who was um, kind of organizing it or who I was talking to about it, sent me an email saying, hey, guess what? Oh, I forgot to mention this part. Hold up. Um, so of all the people who um, participated, they had a list of names and they did a drawing and two people got signed copies of Pegasus, okay? Um, so I got an email from Catherine saying, hey, guess what? One of your students um, won the signed copies because I couldn't give her like the names of my students. So they just put in slips with like um, the school because um, Ms. McKinley was really adamant that they be included in the drawing because she appreciated it. So one of my students won and I was like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. And then she goes on to say, don't worry, you won't have to be tempted to keep it because Robin thought that she appreciated everything you did and thought that you might like your own copy. And I was like, uh, are you kidding me? Like, Robin McKinley wants to give me a signed copy of her book? Yes, I might like that. So I was just thrilled. A, the fact that she even thought of me, like I was just like, Rob McKinley knows who I am, kind of. And again, for me, I've been, Rob McKinley is one of my very favorite authors. She, when I first started reading again, reading adult, she was one of the first authors that, authors that I started reading. Um, and so like, for me, it's like, Robin McKinley, like, yes, she's a person, but her name is, um, when I think of her, I think of like, oh, kind of stuff. But so anyway, so I did get a signed personalized copy of Pegasus from her. Um, which is probably one of my most cherished books now. I um, am thrilled and I just really appreciate her kindness and that she thought of me. Um, and I actually gave my student, I drew names out of all my students to see who would win the signed one. Um, and I gave that to her this week and she was just thrilled. Like I thought she was gonna cry. She felt so special. Um, and so I just really appreciate Robin for doing that and letting me be a part of that. And um, having that moment with that student who doesn't necessarily get a lot of recognition often and who um, kind of doesn't really fit in, but she loved this book and so I was so pleased also that it went to one of my students who had read it and loved it um, and who is a fan of Robbins and who has read her other books. So um, it, it felt like I was giving it to a younger me, like, you know, a, a kid who had really just, just had a passion for this. So I was thrilled. So thank you um, very much to Miss Robin McKinley. Um, and yeah. I definitely just had to fangirl about her because I love her so much. I highly, highly recommend if you like fairy tale retellings or even if you don't, um, Beauty and Rose Daughter are both fabulous. All of her other ones are as well. And these, honestly, these two right here are two of my all-time favorite books. I probably read these books once a year, especially this one. Um, if you like fantasy, especially tough girl fantasy, if you're a fan of like Tamora Pierce um, or Sherwood Smith, those kind of authors, um, these will definitely be something that you would like. I recommend giving her a try. Thanks for listening to me rave about Robin McKinley, and I hope that you had a great week. Bye.